Merrimack Spring Park in St. James, Missouri is a really cool place. It's got fish and it's got some history and it makes your phone do some really creepy things. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. And I'm Gary. And recently we went through Missouri and stopped at Merrimack Springs Park. We're always looking for places to go that don't cost a lot of money, but yet are really cool. And we found it at the Merrimack Springs Park. It's uh, only, you only charge, I think, $5. $5 yes, for parking. Five. It was very reasonable. There's also a campground there, which we kind of wish we would have checked that out, but we didn't. So we stayed a little bit away from it, about a couple miles away at a different park. The really neat thing about the Merrimack Springs Park is that it is the fifth largest spring in all of Missouri. So we got to see that. They also have a fishery of trout yes, several different species of trout yeah. which which is not um, native to the area so they raise uh, rainbow trout and brown brown trout i think so <laughs> i'm not sure you really paid it a lot of attention well they all look the same in the <laughs> they, oh, that's true <laughs> so we're going to show you all of that historical part about it is that at one time They used iron ore to make different items, like for wagon wheels, the rims that go around the wagon wheels. And kettles, iron kettles, and iron utensils, and things like that. And they worked very hard at it, too. In fact, they ran the furnace of this place for 24-7, uh, 365 days a year, for 50 years years. Non-stop. Non-stop. So what happened is when I got close to the furnace, my phone, and I don't know, it's never done this before and it's never done it since. Eerie. Very eerie. My <laughs> phone would not film and it would not, I couldn't take pictures and my phone got very hot. I mean, like I couldn't even hold on to it. It was so hot. And my phone was shutting off. It kept shutting off. And it was like, what is going on? It was so weird. So when we get to the part where we show you the big, huge furnace, we're thinking it could possibly be something connected to the iron. The or it could be something a little bit more creepy. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm thinking, I mean, when you think about your phones, your cell phones, and you think about the fact that you can talk to somebody and there's no cord. I mean, younger people don't think about this at all, but if you grew up with a telephone that had a cord on it that ran on a telephone line from person to person, that was pretty phenomenal. But now there's nothing connecting us except cyberspace. And so there's a lot of things that go on on the phones and on, that we don't really realize or think about. And I just wondered if the high concentration of the iron, of the iron ore, had anything to do with how my phone reacted. If you know anything about that, I couldn't find any information because my phone was burning up, so I couldn't look it up. But if you know anything about that, leave it in the comments down below. Right now, we're going to take you to Merrimack Springs Park. The only place we did not go while we were there, two places actually, the museum was closed that day. Yeah. And um, the other thing was that there was a historical drive.
but it was a very steep driveway. We had mm. the RV on us, on, right behind us. We didn't really want to do it. It was on gravel, and it had rained. So, yeah, all those <laughs> things mixed together, we decided not to do it. But we did do the rest of the park. So, enjoy. The museum is only open Wednesdays through Sundays. We did not know that, did not see that on the website. So now you know. And there's a lot of historical things inside there. This is the fish sanctuary. You can buy food and feed the trout. Ooh, look at them all. Oh my gosh, look at them all. <laughs> They're trying to, to swim against the current. That's like a salmon. Do trout do the same thing? They do. Oh my goodness, this whole thing is just Full of trout. And it's scary to think all this water is going underneath my feet. Watch where you're going. <laughs> Gary just steered me around a mud puddle. <laughs> Mineral puddle. Mineral puddle, there you go. <laughs> oh, is he coming towards us? Maybe we should get out of here. How fast do they move on land? <laughs> what is it? It's a snake. I know that. What? Okay, he's just sitting there. What's he doing? Waiting. Waiting to come out and get us? I'm sure he's looking at us, following us whole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get past here. <laughs> so we gotta watch for water puddles and snakes. And tree roots. Oh, we can't cross here. Oh, great. Okay. On the other side of the fish hatchery here.
lot of people here for a Monday. Beautiful day. Gorgeous day. And they're supposed to have record highs coming up, so that could be why so many are. Why so many are here now. Merrimack was once the settlement of about 500 people. They were the, uh, they made ironworks. These lentils were cast in the Merrimack Iron Works circa 1866. After completion, the lentils were transported by wagon to Dunmore, the home of William James, 1870 to 79, and used on the west side to support the structure above the windows. The building was located on the grounds of the present Missouri Veterans Home. Oh. Okay, so the anchovy chaffery hammer. And we're seeing some of those names over there. So that might be more where they were located originally and then transported over here to have everything all in one area. Don't know, I'm assuming so. In October every year they have a festival where they have people dressed up for the the period the 1800s and they they do demonstrations Wagons similar to this were used at Merrimack Ironworks to haul iron ore from the sinkhole deposit to stockpiles located behind the Furnace Bridge house. High iron rimmed wheels, some four inches wide and nearly six feet in diameter, allowing allowed the wagons allowed the wagons easier movement in transporting heavy loads over the muddy primitive roads of yesteryear. Six to eight oxen or mules were needed to pull the wagons when loaded to capacity. The wagon uses varied as the need arose. In farming, hauling pig iron to market or when lined with iron plates to haul charcoal.
Okay, it was really, really weird. If there's any connection to all the iron and everything that was over in that one area, but my phone got super hot. It wouldn't take any more pictures. It stopped. That was creepy. <laughs> and now we, uh, we are been walking away from it and now it's, it's getting cooled off. How weird is that? <laughs> We're gonna take the loop here to go over by the springs. And there are so many trails here. This is really neat. for a school group to get out of there but they were all lined up underneath their little bunch of little kids and this is the spring it is the fifth largest spring in the state of what state are we in Missouri <laughs> had to stop and think a minute we've been traveling Here comes another school group here really fast so we're going to talk really fast hope you like that that was really cool we enjoyed it we should have a guess at how many fish they saw oh my gosh so many yeah and if you knew what that snake was <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what it was but it, it that was another creepy thing about that place so anyway yeah we but take it, on a lot of risks to make these videos we sure do <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming along. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below. Next to it, a bell is going to pop up. Ring the bell and you'll be notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page, Rose of Faith, for some extra places that we went that I did not make videos out of. And until next time, God, God bless. bless.